Hello, I'm Aaron Hunt, and today I want to talk to you about the Barefoot Revival. The Barefoot Revival is a movement, not just a ministry. When we go to the book of Luke, chapter 10, we see the story where Jesus takes 70 ordinary disciples apart from the 12 that he's invested in. And he tells them to go your way into all the places that I myself am about to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Now he tells them before they go, don't take any money with you, don't take a knapsack, don't even take shoes on your feet. Don't take shoes on your feet is an incredible statement because he was saying more than go unprepared, he was saying go just like you are. Don't wait till you've got a title or a position. Don't wait till your family's raised and the finances are right. Go just like you are. Remember, Jesus sent those 70 into all the places that he was about to go himself. And just like that today, we are just ordinary people with an extraordinary calling on our life. And we're going preparing the way where Jesus himself is about to come. I remember as a young man, as a young Christian man in my early 20s, feeling that pulling, that tugging of the Holy Spirit on my heart, knowing that I was called to do something for the kingdom of God. Now the problem was is that I was always told that you had to be a pastor or a youth pastor or a missionary, a children's pastor or a worship pastor. But man, none of those things fit the box that I felt God calling me to. And I was called here to the streets, among the people, advancing the kingdom, spreading the gospel to people that fell outside the margins of typical church. When we talk about the mission of God, what we've got to understand is that it's bigger than just the church, that it moves outside the walls of the church, outside the paradigm of a structured church meeting, but it moves into the context of your life because your mission is specific for you. That God's put you in a place where only you can reach into your family, into your friends, into your community, into your neighborhood. See, God's got a plan for you, and it's a plan that nobody else can fulfill but you. Theodore Roosevelt said that the credit belongs to those who are actually in the arena, those who spend themselves in the worthy cause. Jesus wants you. He needs you. God has a plan for your life. Isaiah says in chapter 49, listen, O coastlands and nations abroad, before I broke the matrix of my mother's body, he knew me. And that word doesn't mean that he was aware. It means that I was relational with him and that he strategically put me in this place to bring this message that God's got a plan for you and he wants to do amazing things with you.